Hey everyone, welcome to Stellaris. My name is Chief Jonka, today I'm here with a brand new series on the channel. It's been over a year since my last campaign where I played as the Roman Star Empire. It was a long but glorious campaign. We started in CK2, transferred over the game to EO4, Vicky2. We didn't quite get Hearts of Iron 4 because that didn't work out the way I wanted, but then we ended up in Stellaris and the, well, the, the Stars campaign itself was a hundred episodes. So yeah, an epic journey to be sure. And one of my favorite campaigns, if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend you do it now. I'll leave a link to it in the description. But um, yeah, I'm now back with a new series and uh, that is for a very specific reason. I've been to PDXCon, which again is old news. I actually meant to make a video about that, really didn't, didn't get to do that. Um, and when I was there, I got to uh, test stuff. Well, well, there were you know tons of computers there, and you could play games, obviously. And I played Stellaris, for example, and amongst other things. And I got to test some of the DLCs that were new to me. Uh, that includes Mega Corps and the Ancient Relics, which are both old, but I didn't have them before. And also the at that point. Uh, new Lithoids DLC. By now it's again another, you know, already a month old, but at the time it was very new and all of this got me really sucked into Stellaris again. I didn't really have time to start a new campaign right away, but now I want to do it even though I'm aware Federations will hit in January. It's, it's a new huge DLC and a new huge patch that's going to change tons of things, but um, I still want to start the series now for two reasons. First of all, I can't wait. That's actually the real reason, but I don't think it's that bad because the specific setup I have come up here um, will not allow us to join federations or form federations because of this civic. And so I feel like this is fine um, to do that before the federations will hit because we're not going to have anything to do with federations right now anyways. And then so I can do a new campaign where we'll figure out all the new stuff and play the federation game. But yeah, so... What am I doing? Uh, obviously, I'm playing as the humans were playing on Earth. I just love the humans. It's very hard for me to play something else. But um, here we are. And I wanted to play as a megacorp. That was my goal. And yeah, well, I wanted to have humans. And so I thought, okay, which corporation could be there? I could obviously make one up, but that's actually more difficult than you might expect. And then I also checked out the uh, civics for some inspirations and I found the criminal heritage, which I talked about already. This is the reason that we cannot join federations, but it doesn't really matter because we can still build our special branch offices on all the planets that we want anyways and increase crime. And then there's a second special civic. Now, obviously, all the civics for the corporate uh, authority are special because only corporates can have them. But this one and this one, they're especially special, I guess you could say. Now, the second one is the gospel of the masses. I'm going to read that out right here. This mega corporation embraces a curious blend of commercial and spiritualistic values in which the positions of ordained minister and corporate officer have merged into a single role. Now, basically what that means is here that we are a, we're, yeah, we're a mega church. We're a mega church, but we're also somewhat criminal, I guess you could see. So we're a corporation, a company, we're a church, a religion, and we're somewhat of a syndicate. Now, why have I just repeated this three times? Basically, yeah, I had to figure out a way to make sense of this. How can such a, yeah, cult, I guess, take over the world? And so I looked for real world examples, and I think I found one. Now, if you've never heard of the Church of Scientology, then I highly recommend you Google them right now. Pause the video, Google Scientology, and read, you know, maybe the Wikipedia entry that, that should be fine to give you a general idea of what this is all about, because otherwise, none of this makes sense to you. But if you have done that, or if you have heard of Scientology uh, already, then it might, then what you have heard might differ very drastically depending on where you live. So for example, in the United States, the Church of Scientology is an accepted religion, a minority religion to be sure, but a religion nonetheless. Now, where I live in Germany, uh, but also in France, it's uh, very different. Um, here, the Church of Scientology is somewhat considered a religious sect, not a religion to be sure. And it's also seen as anti-democratic, and also as, yeah, somewhat criminal, as a criminal organization, criminal 
company in a way. And yeah, so depending on where you are in the world, uh, people will think very differently of Scientology. Now, and that is exactly the point. This is actually really what, what I want to do. This is why Scientology is perfect for this run, uh, for these two civics that we have here. Um, because basically, this means we, uh, other empires will see us as criminals um, if they only see this side of us, right? Uh, but there's also empires who might embrace our religion and, you know, see us as a true... I don't know, bringer of wisdom or whatever, a savior maybe. And others might just see the corporate aspect of us where we try to make money, um, which is also an aspect in the real world, uh, which some people say that, uh, you know, Scientology is not necessarily criminal, um, but they're definitely not a church. They're just a company trying to make money. So there's different aspects. And so this fits incredibly perfect, at least in my mind. And I'm very, very excited, as you can probably tell, to get this started. Now, uh, accordingly, I have also picked a... Uh, 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 I actually don't know what this uh, is. It I, I don't. I just can't say what the word is. <laughs> That's uh, kind of embarrassing. But anyways, I've picked these two. It's not traits. It's something else. Um, uh, we are fanatic spiritualistic, obviously, because we do have a church, right? And we are authoritarian as well, because well, we have a strong hierarchical structure that we follow and that that is how it is in Scientology and um, yeah oh one other thing I should mention here in the gospel of the masses um, we are gonna make money or well trade value but that converts into energy credits money basically by having spiritualist pops and this works so well because if you are part of Scientology depending on which level you are in like this organization you have to pay more um, money for like the teachings or whatever they call their missionary work or whatever so that is kind of represented here as well now uh in in the same vein i have picked the uh the human traits um i've gone with fleeting which reduces our lifespan by 10 years that's because uh some parts of scientology well scientology rejects parts of modern medicine and so i kind of just you know extrapolated that a little bit and said all right there, there's certain parts in medicine that we don't uh, yeah that we well i guess reject and so our lifespan will be a little bit shorter because of that then we're also conformists because well it, you know again this plays into the whole authoritarian fanatic spiritualistic somewhat brainwashy you know if depending on how you see it uh way uh and then obviously traditional kind of fits there as well just you know in general spiritualistic gives more unity uh, so yeah this is how i set this up obviously as i said we're gonna be on earth and uh yeah we're gonna be starting off i'm done here R actually is there something else maybe i'll just go through this obviously we have our experience here uh, well, appearance here, we've got the species name, the names list, uh, COS for Church of Scientology, we've got uh, traits that I've already talked about, um, obviously soul system, humanoid city, uh, it's ethics, that's what it's called, there you go, alright, yeah, that makes sense, um, there's actually the modifier we get for the megacorp, we get extra administrative capacity, but more penalties from the empire sprawl, um, then we've got the... Uh, we've got the ruthless conglomerate. I actually want to go with the, I serve the faithful. spiritualistic advisor. There this guy is, no is super annoying. Calling. I already tried it. This guy is super annoying. Oh my god. But yeah, uh, we've got this. Then our flag. I picked. This is supposed to be an S. I know it's backwards, but I think it works fine. Uh, then we've got the humanoid ships, and we got Ross Urban as. Uh, wait. I'm not sure, like, I picked this name, like, this has, this has some meaning, but I'm not quite sure anymore. I, I checked who's the current chairman, and then I made some name combinations of spouses and whatever, but yeah, that's, that's just me being weird. Anyways, we're done here, and we are going to check out the game details, the settings here. Now, we're going to play on a medium galaxy size, elliptical shape, and uh, we have nine AI empires. Now, I should mention here that this time I have not included any custom uh, empires uh, like I you, or like I did in the uh, Roman Star Empire run. Uh, the reason is because I I build like nine these nine empires I build myself um, and I forced him to spawn here because I made one empire 
or one nation for each uh, species, right? So whether you're lithoid, machine, mammalian, whatever, for each one of those categories, I made one empire, and then I differentiated uh, between peaceful and, you know, xenophobic and spiritualistic and so on and so forth, that we get a good mix. That was my goal here, and so that's why there's no special empires right now. But I will promise you right now that in the next campaign with the Federation DLC, there I will have Patreons create custom nations that will then uh, that we will then encounter in the game. But I just don't want to have it for this one. Now, Advanced AI, we will have two of them. They will just have a bonus. That's fine. Two Fallen Empires. With a little bit of luck, they will have opposing uh, ethics. And so they might start a war in heaven. Who knows if it happens. We have the Marauder Empire. I've uh, yeah set this to one because I like to have them. They're unique and fun. And if the Khan event happens, that's always cool. But I don't need two of them. That just kind of destroys their uniqueness in a way. If you have two of them, obviously. So we're going to leave it at one. Uh, this is normal. Now, I've reduced the habitable worlds from one to well, 0.5, so, you know, cut it in half, because I don't want to have that many wolves. I want me, I want the nations to actually fight for the lands. Uh, I hope that this works. On the contrary, though, I have increased the amount of primitive civilization, so you can obviously fight other nations, or you can just take it from the primitives, or you can uplift them and get a vassal this way. There's, you know, new ways, new opportunities. I've increased the crisis strength, I've doubled it, um, so that's going to make it a little bit more difficult end. I've also increased, um, well, or reduced, depending on how you see it, the uh, start year of the mid game and end game, end game by 25 years. So normally this is 2,300 and this is 2,400. So I made it a little bit early, uh, just, you know, that, well, I guess this is going to make it more difficult as well because we have less time to prepare. Uh, yeah, difficulty I put on Admiral, which is the second highest, but I turned on scaling difficulty. That means when we set out, except for the obviously Fallen Empires, uh, Marauders, and the Advanced AI, everyone else will actually start just like we will. They will have no bonuses, but as we progress, they will get more and more stronger. And I think that that works pretty well because especially in the beginning, I'm not strong. I'm, I'm not going to be strong. Because just the way I play is is not going to be particularly amazing. Uh, but as I, you know, consolidate my power, I do get stronger and I tend to just snowball the empires. But this way, uh, they will get stronger as we get stronger as well. But th there's no snowballing me either. Like, they're not going to just crush me. I hope this works out. Um, I've actually never played on Admiral. I've played on Commodore, which is the, uh, you know, a lower... Uh, difficulty. So we'll see. Maybe this is going to be too easy. Who knows? We're going to check it out. Uh, aggressiveness is normal. I don't really want to mess with that. No uh, well, random empire placement. Uh, we will not have an advanced neighbor. That's good. Uh, hyperlanes I left. I did reduce the amount of gateways. I want to have them. I want to have them, but I don't want to have a whole lot of them. I, f I find that stupid. And I did reduce the amount of wormholes as well because it was just too many for me, but I definitely want to have more than gateways. Okay. No guaranteed habitable worlds makes it a little bit more difficult, but I guess this works for everyone. And we'll have the Caravaneers. No Iron Man because uh, in a campaign such as this, I don't, I don't like this. I'm not playing for achievements. So um, yeah. Uh, with that said, I think we are going to go ahead and hit play. Um, obviously, as you can perhaps tell, there's not going to be a whole lot of gameplay in this first episode. That's usually the way it is on my channel. I'm taking things a little bit slower. I like to talk things through and so uh yeah we're not gonna be hitting i don't know 2020 uh in well, well 22 22 maybe in the first episodes it's just not gonna happen uh we'll set up our nation i'm not gonna read out this because i didn't bother to change this this is just the generic one but we do get a uh nice overview i'm just wondering this is definitely clearly a female portrait but it says Ross Urban is male, so I'm a little bit confused. Either way, so yeah, we've got another overview here. At the beginning, actually, our civics here won't matter because we won't be able to build branch offices until we actually meet other civilizations. So in the beginning, really, this has no big impact, but it will be more interesting as the game progresses. But yeah, so let's check out our chairman, Ross Urban. Um, he is, whoops, 
Let's check out. He's a fertility preacher. I love that he's a preacher at the very least. That's very good. Um, this has a very unique touch. I mean, I know this is just a regular trait that any person can have, but I like it in the spiritualistic context. So he's preaching us to, you know, make more babies. I like that. And he has home in the sky. Uh, he reaches for the stars. Perfect. Um, star base upgrade cost and module cost. I'm not sure. Actually, that's maybe not that good. That does not reduce the influence cost I thought it would. Well, either way. Uh, and then we have an agenda. Native privilege. Xenophobe ethics attraction plus 20%. But happiness is increased. Interesting. Now, we're not xenophobic yet. But maybe that will happen. Who knows? Now, we're playing as an oligarchy. So every 20 years, we'll have a new election. And um, yeah, for the most part... I will probably re-elect the person. Actually, by the way, this is something I haven't talked about yet at all. You as the viewer, if you're still watching at this point, <laughs> thank you. Um, and I'm glad you stick around. Uh, you're the one that I really want to talk to as well. Um, I mean to include you in this series as much as possible, right? Now, this is not a live stream, so, you know, limited, there's only going to be limited involvement. But I do definitely want to include you in certain things when we talk about big... Uh, changes such as our traditions, uh, our ascension perks, uh, even you know maybe more minor things such as naming systems, planets, and so on and so forth. Maybe ship classes, designing new new ships, whatever, um, and so on and so forth. These big things, I will probably um, depending on how I can manage this. But I'm currently thinking about every twenty years, whenever we have a new you know ruler election, I'm gonna have a yeah a voting video, a poll video where certain things that have just you know accrued over time uh, will discuss, such as ascension perks and so on and so forth. And this way, you'll get to shape uh, the way our uh, corporation operates. Obviously, we'll always play in the you know with the with the background story of the Church of Scientology that I've already mentioned, um, but. Yeah, the specific way in which we evolve, you will be able to shape too. So yeah, that's just as an aside. But yeah, obviously we've got our resources up here. We've got some pretty decent base gains already. I like that. We already have 13 Empire Sprawl, but because we're corporate, we gain a plus 20 administrative capacity. And I think spe specifically in the beginning here, I'm not going to bother too much about that. I will very likely... Um, yeah, just expand as much as I can. Now, we are going to immediately start surveying a system. And we will probably immediately also um, build a new science ship. Just because we need to explore things. We need to explore them fast. I, I might even build, I don't know, one to go this way, one to go this way, and then one to go this way. So yeah, maybe maybe one more we'll, we'll build as well. Now, on our capital world here... We need minerals. The first thing I want to build, because we have to, is a temple. I want to build a temple that will give us spiritualist ethics attraction. We'll have priest jobs, and they will turn consumer goods into unity. I love that. Oh, um, so yeah, we're going to do that. We need more minerals for that. But I think before we do anything else, we might... Uh, well, we don't have minerals. Okay, we don't have minerals for anything. Fine. Uh, we don't have anything in the situation log. No contacts. The market won't really play a role yet but we will obviously try and get the galactic market at some point as we are still a mega corporation and we, we still want to make a profit here um again i'm not like we i'm i'm personally not sure if we are a, a corporation or a church or a criminal syndicate you know who really knows i guess no one really knows when we're all everything together in a way right and i'm really interested to see how the ai empires will react to that some might see us as a criminal entity others We'll embrace our religion. So, yeah, I'm really excited for that. We don't need this right now. Uh, policies. Now, policies might be interesting. This will be the first things that you guys um, will be able to, you know, kind of influence. Because right now, for now, I'm just going to leave it at that. We'll have unrestricted wars. Won't matter in the beginning. Industry and bombing. Uh, resettlement is fine. Now, first, contact protocol, peaceful. I think that's probably the best course of action. We're not militaristic. We're not xenophobic. Um... Initial border status is open is fine too. Dietary balance seems decent. Economy mm, policy. Now, we currently have the military economy here, interestingly. And I actually might want to change this to the mixed economy. 
or um, where we have no bonuses or penalties. I, I think that might actually be worthwhile, but this is the first thing I'm not going to be uh, yeah, deciding myself. I will actually leave that up to you. You won't have to tell me right now there's going to be a special video, as I said. 20 years from now, we'll talk about this more. For now, I think it's fine, but eventually we'll talk about this. Same with the trade policy. We have the wealth creation at the moment. I think that's fine. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk about robotic workers as well and slavery, which we have allowed at the moment and so on and so forth. But that will all come up later. Then as for edicts, um, could go for map of the stars, but I think I need the influence for our expansion. Don't have any of this just now. Ship design has fine technologies we gotta work with. We've got Yolanda Zalazar. She is a, yeah, genius. Okay, well that's good. Um, research station output or... Physics research. I think we're going to go with the research station. Then we've got Andrei Alexeyev. He has New World's expertise. Mm, do I want the Unity or the Pop Growth? This is a tough one, but I think we're going to go with the Unity first. They're really, really good. Um, that's going to help us, you know, jumpstart our first tradition. And then here, Mining Station Output, Nebula Refinery. Yeah, I think we're going to... We don't need any new weapons just now, I think. So we're fine there. Factions won't matter just now, but they will matter later on. And uh, maybe some of you will pick a faction and roleplay as them. That that would be cool uh, to see as well. But yeah, the rest doesn't actually matter. Actually, leaders we can check out. We have our governor, Fernanda Alonso. Uh, isn't there like a Fernando Alonso? Well, anyway, she's got architectural interest. All right, planet build speed, district cost so on and so forth. Awesome. Okay, so we've done a couple of things. We haven't actually let the time move forward, and I think that's fine for this very first episode as the Church of Scientology. This is where we are in the world, and uh, yeah, as I said, I'm going to leave it at that for now. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope you're excited for the next uh, episode. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.